So uh, I, think, I, I think we're li we're live now, but I, I'm going to go ahead and start inviting people to the to the uh, watch party watch party on site. So we're going to go, yeah. and we're, go ahead and make some introductions and then just start start doing some stuff. So everybody, right. if you're just tuning in right now, this is the front door show. I do this every night with a different DJ of all genres. There's the hip hop, there's reggaeton, bachata, salsa, house music, and you know, and today we have my friend, DJ Renzo. Mm -hmm. um, if you heard me mention him, he is native of Chicago because that's where I knew him from, from Chicago. So he, you are now living where? Where are you living in? DC, DC. Okay, DC. <laughs> All right. So just for those people that might not know who you are, why don't you go and give yourself the introduction, what you do, what, you know, and, and where your focus is and so forth and so on. Okay. All right. Well, my name is DJ Renzo. I am currently a uh, resident here in the Washington, greater Washington, D.C. area. I actually live in D.C. proper, but we call this area the DMV, which means uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, because you can, you know, 10, 15 minutes, you're away from all three of those. Uh, and so DC, I'm right here smack dab in the middle. Uh, so I would say DC, Maryland and Virginia, I DJ in all of those. Uh, I DJ up and down the, uh, the East Coast, actually. And so I started out when I lived in Chicago, let me go back a little bit from uh, 2005 to 2007. I actually literally moved on Cinco de Mayo of 2007. I moved to D.C. Uh, but when I was in Chicago, I wasn't uh, a DJ yet. I was just a music collector and always had a bunch of music. Uh, but ever since I've moved to D.C., I think about a year after I got here, I finally took all those CDs and, and somebody was like, hey, man, we did a little house party. He was like, hey, you got a bunch of good music. And so he had me fill in for him at a gig once uh, and... The rest is history. So I've been DJing ever since um, 2000, the beginning of 2000. It's been let's see, 11 years now. So 2008, yeah, 2008. And so I DJ primarily uh, Latin music. I started off as basically only a salsa DJ at first, right. uh, but then I lost my job. So I started DJ in January 2008. I lost my job January of 2010, and so I literally just started DJing full time from that point on I had you know I was collecting unemployment and still doing gigs because I already had gigs because I've been DJing for two years and so from that <laughs> point I know, <laughs> I know. Hopefully, hopefully nobody's watching that for my but at that point I started to uh branch out people started asking me hey you know do you do weddings and stuff like that and so being that I already had a pretty diverse musical background you know, I took a couple of small weddings. I did a wedding with another uh, veteran DJ at that point and uh, just kind of worked my way up through the ranks and kept doing weddings and realized that there was a lot better money doing weddings and corporate events and whatnot. And so I just took a lot of the information and the knowledge that I already had of different genres of music. And then that's what had me to be able to do weddings and corporate events. But I still primarily did congresses. I traveled around. And, you know, I've sort of been head DJs at some congresses. I do shows and uh, tech rehearsals a lot and stuff like that. So I've kind of done that for the last, see, since 2010 until till now, full time. So I would call myself a full time mobile DJ uh, that DJs just about anything and everything. But I have a special concentration in Latin music and old school hip hop and R&B, like 90s, 2000s, 80s, even back to the 70s. Um, music of that genre. So that's what I do full time. I've been doing it that way since uh, 2010. Uh, I think, uh, shoot, I met you when I came back to Chicago. When? When was it? God, 2000. It had been about 2012, 2012. 2012. Okay. Yeah. yeah it was 2012. I remember that was um, you and me discussing it. And I think the reason why I me, mean, I, I reached out to you, I think it was because you know, honestly, I didn't know a lot of DJs out in DC in that area yeah. and stuff like that. In a, in a sense of what you what you were doing, and and I think where we kind of got the focus or where I I kind of noticed it is because of the fact that you had mentioned about the salsa congresses. Oh yeah, I, yeah. So when I started seeing people with the salsa congress, and that that was during the time when you know working with the with the uh, the Chicago salsa congress here, uh, you we, I paid attention to DJs from all over the world 
when it comes to right. salsa congress DJs. And so seeing your name on a, a quite a quite a bit of the uh, congresses, you know, obviously there's you know I talked to Recita and Saladin and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and uh, we talk about the. Um, the fact of yeah, hey man, Lorenzo, when he's back in town, if he's in town, you know, and, and we talk, those are different discussions we talk about. We just like, you know, when he's if he comes back in town, hey, if it's around during the Salsa Congress, we need to bring him in, blah blah blah. But so, mm -hmm. some I know that depending on your schedule, that that particular year you weren't here during the Salsa Congress per se. So right. when you told me you're coming in, I, I said, Hey, I, DJ over at Ahambra, you know, the Tuesday night, the, the number one salsa night in Chicago. That's right. Um so I, I guess the question, that the, the immediate question I'm going to ask is like, were there a lot of Latin DJs in DC when you got there in 2010? Was there, I mean, was there, was there, or should I say, was there a big salsa scene in the sense of that, you know? Yeah, the, the salsa scene had, it's funny because we only had, I am currently roommates with the person, Mr. Uh, Shaka Brown, who ran the biggest salsa group here and still runs the Capitol Congress uh, 14 years or 15 years now and running so uh yeah when i first got here his group clave kazi was just those guys were banging it out uh we had a, a couple of other groups here too i can't remember their names they were mostly kind of uh, local groups but they were they were really good so we had about three to maybe four pretty solid uh dance teams here and as you know most salsa scenes sort of go through the dance teams the more popular the dance teams are uh the more they get out and you know get some visibility and get people interested in it and then we had some pretty good uh salsa instructors here too as well but you got to remember we're also four hours south of new york city and right, Phil right. two hours south of philadelphia which has a pretty uh burgeoning uh salsa scene as well so yeah we are unlike california which is where i'm from you can drive eight to 10 hours in California and still be in California. <laughs> you drive correct, correct. eight to 10 hours over here, you've hit four or five states. So a lot of people travel. So we get a lot of travelers that come through here. Um, not quite as much as uh, Manhattan and New York, obviously. But, you know, so we get a lot of different influences. And D.C. is also what I would call a commuter city. A lot of people move here that aren't from here. Uh, to go to college or to work in uh, government work and whatnot. So we get a lot of different people from all over that have different influences in salsa and different uh, backgrounds and different teachings that have learned from different people. Uh, so that's one of the thing. I think that the big difference between like say Chicago where I lived before here and DC is that while Chicago is a Midwest state and pretty kind of trapped in the middle kind of thing, uh, you know, with Humboldt Park and that area over there and the amount of Puerto Ricans, you know, people that were born with salsa and raised around salsa, it's just, you just have that native influence there. We don't have that as much here in DC as somewhere like New York or Chicago or even like Miami, uh, Florida. Well, I think, um, I think, I think what you, I, I understand what you're saying and I think, and, and I'm sure people are going to comment on this, but it has the pros and cons of that too. Because of which one? Of, of the fact that you know you you have like a a, a trap. You you were talking about the Puerto Ricans here, because mm -hmm. if if I and and I know this for a fact that a lot of the older Puerto Ricans, they will come out in the neighborhood, but they don't come out in the salsa clubs per se. You know they right. they'll stay in the uh, lounges per se or something like that. Gotcha. Unless there's a artist coming, you know, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vega or you know, yeah, yeah. 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 Well. Yeah, yeah. yes, 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 yes. You know, then 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 they come out in droves. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or the festivals <laughs> and stuff like they come out in droves. But there's there's not um, it's 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 a tough um, balance between the life you know the the salsa events per se in Chicago, and you know and and even even with the, even like with the, the uh, Puerto Rican festival per se, there's been a lot of uh, controversy in that and stuff like that. Because oh, really? Yeah, just 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 because of the fact that you know this, there's not some really good people that have done things in the past, and when uh, it comes I got to artists and stuff like, or, or or production of um, events and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. I know they try to clean that up, and they do, and they, they are cleaning it up, and you know I, I give credit to them and stuff like that, but at the same time, what I think what happens with you, it, and and I'm going to use this example because I have to have to say it exactly. Like for instance, you and I know that Andy Cruz is from Chicago. Andy Cruz is our boy. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And 
And we talk about when he started Los Jovenes the Swing, and that was the whole salsa dance group and stuff like that. I used to go out to California, and just for an ex example, Los Angeles. Los Angeles did not have a salsa scene per se. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's what, but look at it now. It has become like, because there is a dancing community, there is schools and stuff like that. So it has, it has a much younger market. And I think DC kind of has that same thing because you like what you're saying, everybody's coming from all over and commuting and stuff like that. And it's like, kind of the same thing with Los Angeles. It, it, it didn't have, a, a, I mean, probably the closest thing was the Mayan and that was over to, near Vegas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. and it gravitated, it got bigger and bigger. Then there, it was, you know, then like you mentioned, uh, Shaka had his, his Congress, how long now? Uh, uh, 15 years now. 15 years. And I'm sure mm -hmm. Uh, that had a lot to do with what's his name from New York. Uh, God rest his soul. Um, Choco. Uh, Choco. Choco. Yeah, mm -hmm. Choco. Yeah. I'm sure that was you know where people were like, man, that's that's like. But at the same time, Salsa Congress for here in Chicago had it 19 years, and before that was cultural expressions. So there was mm -hmm. the mambo movement per se, and this is Saladin and Rosita. Uh, we talk about that. It was a big mambo uh, following per se in the older generations of the uh, salsa dancers. So you probably came at the right time, at the right place, you know, <laughs> that's like, because, because of the fact that you had that, and, and, and I would hope that you been in Chicago, you've been in Chicago and seeing veterans like, you know, Frankie J, me and all these guys that are playing the salsa were like, Oh, this is the music. This is the real stuff. This is what we play. Oh, yeah. And and I'm I'm sure, like, you know, you know, and you can play all the Mark Anthony and Victor and Wells you want and stuff like that. And that's gonna get everybody. But when you get into the Son Sonoda Bonsenia and there's some of the deeper stuff, then it becomes different. And for the dancers per se, you know, in every Congress, you go to the Congress, I don't, I don't hardly ever go, you're gonna hear Victor Manuel, Mark Anthony on a dance floor per se. But you're going to hear some of the deeper stuff and you know and there's and and even the vinyls you know the final djs and stuff like that because i've seen a lot of that on on the live stream with the yeah. vinyl djs and there's a lot of music out i mean trust me there's tons of music but i think that that has helped dc create something or, or should i say and dc more so than new jersey or new york or you know philadelphia I think DC because it became, you know, like a, a balloon that's that's just keeps building, building, building. And you know, you took advantage of it. Good for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and and, and uh, like I said, and, and obviously because you're different variety of music, obviously I can see why you do more more warbles because there's so much variety of people there. And yeah, yeah. Like that. So, you know, <clears throat> like I said, I, when I notice you, I you're probably one of the very few DJs in the States here that I've seen on um, probably more Congresses than anybody else. And, you know, it, it, you're probably doing what, about six Congresses a year now? Yeah, but like larger Congresses, yeah, probably, but yeah, probably about six to seven of those. Uh, and then I do a lot of things on the mid-level size, sort of local Congresses and sort of local, like the Port City Salsa Splash, Barrio right. Bash in Atlanta. These are smaller Congresses, but still, they still draw some of the top names in terms of the, right. the performers right. that they have. That, and, that's, and that's what I was going to say. So you... You have that, you know, and not to take away from anybody that's listening, anybody, what you call it, but I, I see people, um, and, 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 and what I'm going to be talk specifically about Sasa Congress, yeah, yeah. the Bachata Congress, because honestly, you know, props out to touch events and all the guys that have been doing the Bachata festivals and stuff like that here in the United States and saying, God, I've seen the growth. And I, you know, I talk to Rudy all the time and we're always talking about the business of it and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I give him props for everything growing and stuff like that. But you were there before the Bachata festivals, you know, Bachata Congresses came out. Yeah, I, I was there. at one of the first ones here in the States by right. Lee El Gringuito here in DC. I was, yep. I was actually at that one. Right. Uh, and it's grown tremendously, like you said. But yeah, salsa Congress is since what, 1998 or 99? Puerto Rico? Yes, yes. It's, it's I mean, it, God, that's, and that's the, one of the most original ones. Yeah. And it's been 19 years with Saladin and Rosita. This yeah. will be their 20 yeah. year anniversary coming up now. So, I mean, all of that is like like a big, I, and, and I see the growth and stuff like that. I see what's going on. And I think it's important that 
every city does what they do as far as Congress is. Now, you know, I'm going to, you know, I, I don't know if you heard me mention it about me being the, one of the first DJs to bring Kasumba to Chicago and stuff like that, oh. you know, going back nine, nine years ago. And, <laughs> I, I, you know, oh, and, and trust me, me playing it the first time on the air car, there was, it was negative. There was really a negative about it. In, yeah. a, in a sense of like, what are you playing? What is this? Uh, but look at now. Kasumba Congress is all over the world now, <laughs> you, know, they're, they're, you know, and, and it's still a bigger event out in Europe. We know that. What is yeah. your, your take on Kasumba there in the, in DC? What is, how's it, how's that been? Oh, Kizomba. That? Yeah. Kizomba is, is definitely grown here uh, because we have a, you know, obviously Kizomba has its roots uh, from Africa. And so uh, obviously people, because originally, a lot of the people from the Kizomba community, uh, not the true Kizomba community from Africa, but the ones here sort of started from people branching off from salsa and starting Kizomba. First, okay. it happened with bachata. It happened the same way like it did with bachata, with Kizomba, the same way. Uh, people said, ooh, what is this? And they learned it and they tried it and they started branching off and adding it, you know, another feather in their cap. But there was already a large uh, Kizomba community that we didn't know about because we're under the Latin umbrella. That's under the African umbrella. This is mostly African folks doing, you know, dance that's native, you know, to them. And so once some salsa folks got their ear to the ground and found out about this Kizomba theme, and then they start branching off and start doing it. Now that started to grow, and that scene in and of itself is pretty uh, big here. Oh, I wouldn't say big; it's sizable here on the East Coast. DC with DJ Oscar BA and uh, a couple of the DJs that we have here, uh, they're definitely keeping it going. But I think Zook may have actually surpassed Kizomba in well, terms of popularity. I'm glad you, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Because um, yeah. yeah, that's, I remember that that was one of the things that, you know, I, I and I talk about it because Kizomba and then Zook is, you know, I, I think the, when I went to San Diego, uh, I think it was about five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. I would talk about Kasumba and they said, oh, that's, that's small. <laughs> Zook yeah. is bigger and stuff like that. And, and, yeah. and so you're seeing, and obviously they put Zook and Kasumba in the same umbrella of what, you know, because it's, it's, it's very similar and stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. in the sense of music wise and stuff like that. But then the, there's all this sub genres of Kasumba, you know, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. That, you know. so mm -hmm. I, 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 I get what, where that's grown. Um, but like I said, I think I think one of the things I, I, I and tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I, you know, in the nightclub aspect of it, if someone like you, we play our salsa, we play our bachata, and if someone plays a zook or a kasumba, I, I, me as a DJ would tell them, don't turn it off, try it, or you know, watch some people do it because it's actually not, it's it's not a terrible dance you know it's not it's actually very sexy and, and sensual you know mm -hmm. just like bachata sensual bachata you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's it has its it has its you know and safety with zook you know it has its same thing and um i just was curious as to you know where where was where was the focus at where in your market what you're doing now over there um what do you so see? in dc Currently, you know, again, because like I said, DC is a very social town. We don't have people, a lot of native people from any of these genres, be it salsa, bachata, or salsa with, let's say, Cuban folks or Puerto Rican folks or even New York Rican folks, uh, or with bachata with Dominicans. We don't have a lot of Dominicans here either. Uh, or uh, we have a decent amount of folks uh, that would have you know, maybe come from Angola here, but not, we have mostly Eritreans and Ethiopians here. So although it's still African, that's still not native for them necessarily. And then right. uh, Zouk being mostly the sort of Brazilian style Zouk is what they do here. Uh, so we don't have a lot of Brazilians really pushing. So we don't have a lot of people native from those communities. And that's the problem. That's why a lot of these um, genres don't get the, uh, that sort of native push that I think helps in a lot of cities. Uh, that would have that. And so um, a lot of the stuff is being pushed by people that started off with salsa. And so bachata, that's the same thing happened here. Most of the people that 
her pushing bachata hair started off at salsa, then they branched mm -hmm. off to bachata, and then some of them branched off to kizomba. And so we have all four of those genres here. Uh, to me, I would say currently, uh, I wouldn't say salsa. Some people say, oh, salsa is dead. That's, that's not true. Uh, salsa may have, a lot of the people have gotten married, moved on, grown up, or just died out of the scene. And some of them still dance and moved on to other scenes as too other scenes as well. But right now, currently, I would say bachata is probably more popular for various reasons. I mean, we can go into the, the reasons why that may be. I think you may know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that is currently because DC is a social town and, and, and people don't really want to get into dance like they used to back when I got in, let's say back in uh, 2003. They don't want to get into dance and do that kind of commitment to learn it and bachata is relatively easy to learn on you know basic the basics of it right you still right. got to put in the time if you really really want to learn the stage craft and how to perform it and how to do well with it but you can pick up bachata literally in in two hours of sitting down with somebody and pick it up whereas salsa you really got to put in that work to learn it so that's why i think here in dc something like that is even more popular people look at kizomba and think oh it's easier you know, because right. you're just, it kind of looks like you're just kind of hugging and rocking back. But Kizomba is more of a feeling dance. It's really not about one, two, three, five, six, seven. So you can't sort of break it down like an engineer would, which right. we have a right, lot, right. a lot of engineers here. And they want to break <laughs> dances. They want to break dances down like that. And, and Kizomba is not really like that. It's more about the feeling of it. And so the syncopation and the sort of uh, being attached at the hip. And you have to put in the time to sort of learn that and have a certain sense of rhythm to kind of get that very well so mm -hmm. probably that's why it's not as popular i think and then again like i said it doesn't fall under the latin umbrella i mean it's a lot of it sang in portuguese which is of course a latin derivative but yeah. again the dance derived in africa so right. people right. don't really see it as a latin dance in the same zook actually didn't uh, originate in Brazil, the, the kind that we practice and do the most here in the States, or at least here on the East Coast, is Brazilian Zouk. But again, that's right. a style of Zouk, which also comes from Africa. So that's why I think you don't see a lot of it sort of popularizing here. Uh, you know, but they have their own communities here, which our people don't really know about. I found out because I'm a DJ and I know some of these <laughs> other DJs. I'm like, holy crap, there is actually a big there's a relatively sizable Kizomba community here in DC. Right. I found that out when I went to a club and was talking to the uh, manager about doing a night and whatnot. And this guy came up and was talking about doing a Saturday in a month. And he said something about he had 200 people coming. And I'm, I'm like, wait, 200 people on the Kizombas? I'm like, wait, do you know DJ such and such? And he goes, no. And I'm like, oh, so there's a self-sustained Kizomba community already here. Right. right. Uh, well, so, well, yeah. well, good that you mentioned it because you know, I, I mean, my the the one of the the guys that are doing it big time is DJ Leaked. Is uh, uh -huh. you know, Danny? Danny's big in 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 it, and in fact, um, Danny will tell you that he started as, as a DJ with me, um, doing. Um, he wasn't really a big salsa dancer, but he got mm -hmm. into a lot of the bachata um, aspect of it. Okay. But he was never a dancer per se in that time. The moment that he heard, um, and hopefully one of these days I have him on the stage. And he, he's a doctor now. He's a he's a. Uh, oh, okay. So it's hard for him to get with cup. But one of the cool things is that the moment that he got Kasumba, he went a thousand percent into it <laughs> to the point where him and his uh, his his wife is teaching. Now, yeah. teaching to someone and stuff like that. And they're doing all the congresses and stuff like that. And I, and, you know, and I've got to tell you something. One of the things that's happened, and he, he, he and I have talked about this when it comes to the Kazumba. A lot of times in Chicago, a lot of Kazumba events or Kazumba things don't happen strong here because people are really traveling to the real big Kazumba events. Yes. Which are yes. Out of state. Yeah. So, you know, let's say we have 200 people. But on a given weekend, 50 people are gone. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. gone to, you know, and I know a couple of people that actually travel, like, like I don't, you know, they, they literally work Monday through th Thursday and a Friday, they're flying out and they're, they're coming back on Monday morning to go back yeah. to work. And they, you know, so we get hurt 
or should I say the consumer community kind of, it kind of is, so what happens is that we don't have a really sustainable uh, Kusumba, uh, Zook, uh, you know, it's, we, not by lack of effort, we've tried tre- many, mm-hmm. many, many times. In fact, I've had a Kusumba room at Ahambra and it just always was, it, it was not the strongest, you know, yeah. where here you have the more salsa, you have more bachata and stuff like that. You could, you can survive on a bachata night or salsa night, whereas Kusumba night, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a crapshoot basically. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I found out. And, and, you know, it's not, not like, like I said, nothing against the, the music and nothing against the, the people here It's just, there's bigger events and people are flying to the bigger events and there's nothing. Yeah. Wrong. And then the theme, the, 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 the thing with that is, is like I said before, you have to have somebody native from that community. They're representing it, you know? And I think that that's why they're traveling to these other events because that's what they have. They have people that are from Portugal. They have people that are from Angola. They have people that are from Africa that are teaching this and the people are traveling, having to travel to get the real deal. And once they go, so so they don't do a lot of Congresses. They call their events weekenders. And so they have a lot of weekenders though. And so when they have these weekenders, they invite the best of the best. It may be a smaller event than a salsa Congress, but it is very, uh, uh, just with the amount of the competency of the people that are there, the DJs, the instructors. Oh you know, yeah, you have and then Sarah, they come you got, back. You have Sarah there. You got Charles. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, get, you got the the main names per se and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's, and then you come back home and then you dance with people who are just kind of barely learning it. And then you know, so the motivation kind of goes down a little bit. I, I've I've mm-hmm. seen that here and I've seen that in some other communities that I've lived in with Kizomba. Uh, you know, it's once they go in and get a real taste of that real Kizomba and they dance with some of those real instructors and then you come back and all you have is a bunch of people that are learning with you, it kind of stunts your motivation a little bit. Right. Yeah. So so speaking of in music and this I'm not, I'm I'm gonna change the subject on this because you mentioned about you being the East Coast. Um, what and I'm I'm gonna take it for instance what's going on here. We're we're getting an explosion. Well, I should say probably in the past five years, explosion of Cuban music here okay. in, in in Chicago, and we even doing a night, a Cuban night. <laughs> What's hilarious is that, and 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 there's no secret about it. I'm doing a Cuban night, and even Cuban places can't even do Cuban nights. But <laughs> I, I mean honestly, because the 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 events, the Cuban places that try to do Cuban event or Cuban, let's say they do a, a night, a, a, then it becomes a salsa night. It doesn't become a Cuban night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're seeing this big, strong, like there's one of the teachers, his name Edson de Cuba, that he's from here in Chicago, or well, he's from Cuba, actually, and he's teaching the real rumba, he's teaching real mm-hmm. Cuban. Where's your, where is Cuba music, Cuban music out there for you? Since you say you got everybody coming in, are you, yeah. are you playing more of it? Are you playing less of it? The dimba, you know, that's where yeah. I'm Yeah. <laughs> so yeah th- this has been an ongoing battle here in dc so dc uh, not anymore but i would say dc maybe five to six years ago was principally or dominantly predominantly an on two city like okay. when i hear people talk about the different cities and what dominates it was pretty much an on two dominated city at least in terms of our most popular instructors and popular dancers same, same here in chicago yeah same here in chicago. yeah right yeah, yeah. From, yeah. right same thing from what i remember when i lived in chicago so it's the same thing so what happens is um some of those people on the on two scene have also lived and traveled to europe and europe obviously has a different connection with Cuban music than does the United States, uh, obviously, because of the the embargo kind of has a lot to do with that. But Mm -hmm. a lot of those artists, Cuban artists, uh, move like La Maxima and some of those guys within a lot of those groups that we play, the music we play, they're from Cuba. And they yep. just moved to Europe because it's such easier access for them and, to and move. Money's better too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of ties into my initial point about dc in particular again we don't have enough native folks that are actually pushing it so now we have a couple of timba you know casino groups here we have uh um people that have tried it and we've even tried to mix the mambo folks with the timba folks because some of the people love both 
Now, it's a small group of people here, DJ Dola, a good friend of mine, being one of them, who has tried to sort of coalesce those two together. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out because when you go to those events, what happens is the on two people, they want American mambo on two type music, that gritty sort of on two New York on two music. And the team of folks, they will dance to that. They will. They'll still get it, you know, and sometimes they'll still do a rueda to it as well if it's fast enough, you know. But at a certain point, they get tired of waiting for Timba. And well, then the on two people get tired of waiting for can, Mambo. Can I give you, give you a word of advice? Um, and only because of the fact that I've, I've lived it for the past five years. When we first started, and, and is, you know, I, I could care less if some, somebody wants to do it, like they, you do it and stuff like that. When mm -hmm. we first started it, we called our nights Miami style lights. And the kind of concept we had was what they played in Miami. Now we mm -hmm. know in Miami, and then even there's the, the argument between people from Miami and the people from Cuba, it's a different, you know, they have a different, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, even the we yeah. we weather is a little different as well. Yeah. Yeah. So when we decided to do Miami style, I remember we did, we literally did not play the on two music. We played some on one music, you know, which was the, the more the salsa romantica. Because yeah. what we noticed is that we had people learning. They they like they like what they sing, and there was a lot of new people coming into the scene as far as like the learning what Cuban style, you know, or Rueda style and stuff like that. Right. And, and it was it was it was especially with Edson. I, I Edson was is a big factor of the Cuban, you know, the because he, you know. In the class that we have, I, I think we have in, in, we've had classes up to a hundred people at one time in, mm -hmm. in the class that, and a place holds only 200 people. So just imagine yeah. that there's a hundred people. But we also noticed that people who have no clue about one, two, three, five, six, seven, pick up the Cuban style quicker mm -hmm. as far as like it, 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 going forward, going back, going side to side, and then, and, you know, and then left turn, right turn, and so you know that's kind of what the basics of which called. So, <clears throat> what we notice is that if we do a salsa on one or romantic salsa, it was easier to catch on per se. When if we ever try to do like on two with Cuban, then you would, then what happens is that the on two people would be like, this is not what I want, blah blah blah. So we actually right. we. Made, we made sure that we understood, you know, and trust me, I would get people tell me all the time, hey man, we want to hear this mambo, we want to hear that mambo. And we tell them, you know, and we have a Saturday night, we have a Friday night. Friday night is our Cuban night, Saturday is our, our traditional Puerto Rican on two, you know, stuff like that, mambo, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. And we tell them, listen, this Friday night, we're playing Cuban, we're playing Cuban, and it's grown. It's, Exponentially, we've grown really big in the Cuban aspect of it. Even to the point, I don't know if you've seen that, uh, it was supposed to happen in April. They're supposed to have the uh, weather day, the day of weather where everybody all over the world and stuff like that before this whole thing, COVID had hit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've been doing it now for the, the uh, International Weather Day probably for the past four years. But we started our Miami style. It's going on six years now. No, about six years. Yeah, six years. But Cuban night, true Cuban night, has been going on for about five years. Okay. So if if uh, my word of advice, if you were to do Cuban, and, and if you really wanted to grow, <clears throat> you need a teacher from Cuba. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now, because I because you know. I I I had to give a lot of credit to Edson and anybody else that's on, on online. They're going to tell you the same thing that Edson has been a big part of it because he'll teach you know a lot of stuff that I, I don't think anybody that's from here you know he that someone from you know just like you said about the kasumba somebody somebody who's really from Africa has got to teach the kasumba yeah yeah somebody from Cuba has got to teach the Cuban you know it can't be yeah. someone that's the school taught yeah. per se here. Yeah. Like at that. least someone who's traveled like there's a lot of these instructors like in boston i know that they do these travel these trips over to cuba for like you know nine days and they do these really intensive and then they have these sort of trades that they do with the people uh we'll give a quick shout out to my boy enrique melendez and also carlos reyes carlos is from uh formerly from north carolina and now in st louis and also enrique in tallahassee that i see 
uh, have joined in and tuned in. Just want to give them a big shout out really quick. Yeah, we got a lot of a lot of a lot of guys from here. You know, Jay Mars is on here as well. Like a a Rod, you know, you know a Rod and stuff like that. Uh, N- Nelly, yeah, you know, uh, my cousin Rosia and then Fabian. A lot of people from the from the the salsa community, Cuban yeah. community are online as well. So yeah, they, it's, big shout out yeah. to them. <laughs> like you were saying. Yeah, just I mean. Uh, it's it's okay here. It's decent, but I think the the, the failure here has just been uh, not a failure, but just a failure to launch. I'll say is the ability to intertwine those two different communities. Um, like you said, most the average person, I think, so many people that I know, even in the on two community, most of them started on one, and most of them have done a casino rueda before, so they understand and they know what it is. They know what dami and chufla and all this stuff is but they just sort of followed the trend when on two was really, really trending, which was, you know, like, you know, what the last say maybe five years ago for, uh, mm-hmm. for a whole 10 year period on two was just the theme, at least here on the East coast. And even when I was in Chicago with you guys out there, you know, same thing it, on two was just the theme at that time. And so, um, but most people that I know have, are at least familiar with Casino Rueda. And that was sort of one of their first introductions to salsa. Uh, It just never really stuck with them, I don't know. And I guess maybe because they were chasing that same popularity of on two at the the time, you know. But at currently now uh, with like Timba and Rueda, it's really like grown hard. And so so that community, while it's, maybe not as large but it's really strong like those people are really supportive and they go to all of the events and they really start to learn about the music uh you know the history of it and all too uh, lorenzo here's here's something not to cut you off real real quick but here was something that i i i know what helped the cuban aspect of it and 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 i should say it it, it, let's let's go back in history uh with even when i did the first reggaeton concert here in chicago in 2004 and I did the first Cachata <laughs> concert, you know, but I actually did the concert. I yeah. did the groups and stuff like that. And that was one of the things I talked to like Danny about is like, that's one of the things that I think is missing from Chicago is that there is not a Kasumba artist coming into Chicago to perform. I don't mm-hmm. know, if, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you when I brought Evie Queen, Baby Dresser Green on Cheka to the Aragon in 2004, for the fact that you know we only had the two thousand people, it was, it was it was it was terrible in the sense of what how much money we spent. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but it needed to happen to make the events go forward. And one of the things that I'm very thankful for is that there's been outside promoters now coming in and doing um, Cuban concerts here in Chicago. And that's been a, like a big, a blessing. You know, we had uh, Molita, uh, we had Leone Torres, you know, which Leone Torres mm-hmm, is like, mm-hmm. you know, oh my God, you do it. Mm-hmm. But we had, mm-hmm. you know, I DJed with him at the House of Blues and stuff like that. But just the fact that now there's these artists that are coming in, what is your concert scene out there in DC? Since, since we're talking about the music aspect of it, but what is the Latin concert scene out there? Are there do you get the bachata? Do you get the reggaeton? Are you just uh, any salsa? Any? Uh, you know, we definitely is- get the, the we definitely get the salsa artists through here. I, I think we get all of those artists here, but I think what happens is we have two separate scenes here, uh, and I feel like most places that I've lived, I, I see this as well. You have the Latin scene, which is the people that are predominantly Spanish speaking people from Spanish speaking countries. Uh, you know they tend to operate like you just said the same thing with the puerto ricans there going to the, the bodegas and all you know it's just a different different vibe that they operate on than what i would call americanized salsa or classroom salsa people who have learned salsa here you know via one two three five six seven you know right. so what happens is the scene here in terms of the latin community that i was talking about oh it's big like those concerts all the time we get all those artists, Anthony Santos, Kiko Rodriguez, all the bachata artists come through here, the reggaeton artists come through here, and definitely Gilberto Santa Rosa, like even at the Salsa Room, which I used to DJ at quite a few throughout the last 10 years I've DJed at the Salsa Room, they've had 
just they they were i think the one of the first times that a grand combo came to the united states was they came to the salsa room here in dc uh and i saw a grand combo at the salsa room uh oscar de leon's been there victor manuel i don't know about i don't think mark anthony's been there uh if so it was definitely a long time ago but yeah all the artists do come here and what happens is that's mostly predominated by that first community that i was telling you about the latin community that's here the El Salvadorians, the Colombians, the Peruvians, the Bolivians that are already here, they right. dominate that. And then our people will supplement that. We go to that as well. We're like, oh, God, oh, who? Oh, Victor Manuel's here? And then our people <laughs> go. Yeah, but, you know, they don't really know about Victor Manuel. Like it's, they, it's, the, it's the after effect. <laughs> yes, they're not, they're, not, they're not the ones that are, even when I, I was on the, you know, I do the Aventura dance cruise every year, too. And last year we had, I think, was it Victor Manuel? No, Oscar de Leon was last. And the yeah. one before that was Victor Manuel. And then Gilberto was before that. And El Canario was there every year. Uh, and right. so, you know, we have, and so what I noticed, is your same thing. You have two different communities there. You have the people that are dancing off to the side and you have the people that are dancing right up close to the stage. And not only are they dancing, but they're also reciting the lyrics word for word. Right, right, now, these right. are people that grew up with it and know it. Now, yeah. the other community that that I'm also a part of, they don't know the lyrics to the song. They, they know who Victor Manuel is. They may know the coro. They may know the chorus a little bit, you know, but they don't know like the whole song or the history of the song or what the song is saying. So yeah, if it was just up to us for those folks to sort of, you know, for the artist to depend on, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. So luckily we <laughs> have, yeah, luckily we have a strong Latin community because those people that I was telling you about now, those folks, we're just kind of dipping our toes into the pool of Latin community. You know, right, folks right. are just like, oh, what's that? And they learn salsa. They're on the scene for three or four years, maybe five years, and then they're gone. You have some hardcore people, too, that stick around for 10, 11, 12, 15, 20 years, you know. But that community in and of itself would not be big enough, not even here in D.C., to, to sustain yeah, 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 the, yeah. A, a concert. Like, let, obviously, Oscar De Leon or somebody like that who's super popular, but let's say it's somebody like Los Adolescentes, you know. They're not going to know about that, maybe, or maybe they may know their most popular songs, but they may not spend fifty dollars to go see Los Adolescentes at a concert, you know. Right. So right. yeah, that's why we survive. Uh, those artists come through here because we do have a sizable El Salvadorian community, a sizable uh, Peruvian, Bolivian, and a Colombian uh, community here, and with some 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 Dominicans and some Puerto Ricans sprinkled in, you know, from here to here. Right. Well, so then, yeah, that's what I was going to say. But what what I've seen, um, there's a couple of promoters that have brought in the. <clears throat> I haven't done it yet, personally. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it yet, I, and and that isn't by lack of a lack of trying. It's just that some, you know, we let's be realistic. If they're coming from Cuba, in order to make it, you know, I I, I even talked yeah. about some. You know, we, we talked about La Maxima seventy nine coming in, mm -hmm. but in order if, if people, if you don't understand. La Maxima Sign, there's visas. And for that, <laughs> for it to, to make financial sense, you have to book a city of like six, six cities in order for them to make it feasible for that group to perform in yeah. in Illinois, you know, or should I say United States? And I know that was the talk about it. I think the um, Aventura Cruz thought, talked about it too, about bringing them as well. Uh, so, they have. They, they were there. Oh, it's the Tramboranga. God, who do we have? I think it was La Maxima. We had La Maxima last time. Was it La Maxima? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So I remember that was, you know, and when we're talking La Maxima, you know, uh, going back when they first broke out, I should say, maybe right. about five years ago, six years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was like saying, no, oh, man, that would be a great group. Uh, Acroma Latina was another group that I was talking, trying to bring them in. And we we talked, you know, I talked to uh, the, the singer's husband, who was the manager, yeah, and we, that's what exactly we talk about. It's like in order to, for people to come from the European states to here, you got to do five cities. That's just yeah. there's no there's no. So you know, it, it, and and that's not an easy job to do. Meaning, I'm I'm all for it. Yes, let's do it here in Chicago. But what other four cities are going to say yes and let's do it and how we're going to yeah, yeah. you know put it all together? That's that's the most difficult thing about it. Whereas you know. Um, what what these guys do these promoters like when they brought Manolito, Manolito he, they had a five city tour 
Leone. I think he had the 10 city tour and stuff like that. So it made sense and stuff, you know, and then obviously they, they utilized me as the marketing aspect of it. They, use, they utilized me to DJ and stuff like that. So I was very honored that I, you know, I'm, I'm picked as the Cuban uh, DJ, you know, for the, <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big promoter when it comes to the Cuban stuff, but that's what I'm saying. It, it's, you know, if, if anything happens in the Cuban community, when it comes to what you call it, I'll make sure to tell them to contact you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, as far, as far as, yeah. yeah, as far as, you know, because I would, to, to, I think you're going to need that for DC for it to kind of, kind of break open because when we had um, Manolito performed, um, anybody that was there, they, you know, they performed for two hours straight. That was a two hour concert. Yeah. And I've never seen that before. I never seen a, a stage artist or should I say the group. And, you know, and it's not just like a singer. And that's not like Hector Sander, Victor Manuel, or, you know, uh, Oscar De Leon. These yeah, guys are all performers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the whole, he, band. He, he, the whole band. I mean, the four the top singers and then the piano guy singing and then the guy in the back and the trumpet and the, you know, yeah. they, they, that's a whole group singing. It's a yeah. total different uh, animal <laughs> yeah. for a musician. And it's probably the same thing like La Maxima 79, because let's be honest with you, uh, uh, what's his name? The the main guy, the uh, oh, DJ uh, yeah. Zero, Zero? His birthday was just uh, yesterday. Uh, Zietto, DJ Zietto. Well, he's yeah. the witchcraft, but there's Tony Bellotti and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I forgot the, the main singer's name and stuff like that. But there's a lot of people that are part of this, this whole, you know, the, the group. And it's the same thing. It's, hence, I think that's what happens with Cuban bands. There's, there's, <laughs> there's everybody. Again, with instrument, instrumental aspect of it, it's, it's, they have their own talents and stuff like that. It's just not one guy on, on, yeah, the, yeah. on the mic. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like it's not, it's not a, a, a backing band supporting a front man singer. It's like you know, every every integral piece of the band is is important. Who did we have here recently? Oh. Cuban band. Oh my God. My brain just goes bloop sometimes when I'm trying to. It wasn't Los Van Van, but it was like one level below Los Van Van. They were they were like almost to that level. And yeah, of course, the whole Cuban salsa community here definitely was up in arms about that. And they definitely uh got out to support that with all kinds of the videos and pictures on Facebook and whatnot. But yeah, yeah but again, yeah, Cuban style salsa or timba or casino rueda isn't as big here in DC as it obviously is down South and then and, and Miami and Florida and anything proximate to, to Miami. Um, but, you know, it has a rich community here already with some people that are really pushing it. Uh, and a lot of the kids, because sometimes at school, I think in the colleges when they do it here, like at George Mason, that's some of the, that's some of the first salsa that they learn It's because it's, it's interactive. You know, people pick it up easier they're more inclined to want to try it because they feel like they're a part of a group because you're learning it as a group in Noruega you know so mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 here but I think again especially with the president who's in office now and our you know relations uh with Cuba and being as they are and probably not going to improve anytime like soon soon um you know we keep missing out on a lot of that good rich culture that's well there, let's so. let's be honest the embargo yeah. didn't help you know that, that yeah. you know yeah and if, and if that continues that it isn't going to help continue yeah you know, with the music stuff i mean like that. it's literally 90 miles away from our border you know what i mean yes, all I know, that rich history and culture is right there and we can't even go as a matter of fact speaking of the aventura dance crews i was ready we were supposed to go to cuba not I this last one i remember that i remember that we went to dr last one but the one before that we were supposed to go to cuba and literally two days before president trump says no ships going into cuba yeah, literally two does. days before so uh i was really ready to dive in and learn about it and get excited about it myself you know from the motherland you know but uh it never happened we went to coco k instead right <laughs> <laughs> heard all about it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so, this, it's not the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, not. <laughs> not quite. I mean, we still had fun and, you know, we're, uh, you can never not have fun when you're on a beach. But I think most of the people that signed up for that trip in particular really wanted to go 
to oh, Cuba because that's absolutely yeah. that was you know and and uh, I was I was I was set because I was helping out with the first Cuban salsa congress that was there. I don't know if you, uh, you heard about mm, that. No, no. So so yeah, they 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 did the first one. I, I, her name is Evangelina out in Miami, mm -hmm. and I, I'm the one who got Saladin and Rosita to go there. Yeah. And I don't know if you've heard, but this last salsa congress, we actually had a Cuban artist you know, that actually performed on a Saturday night there at, at the yeah. Sasa Congress. And it was, it was, and, and it had a lot to do with the connections. I says, you know, and I couldn't go because my grandson um, who has cerebral palsy ended up getting to the hospital. So when I was supposed to leave Chicago, um, I had to make a choice and I, I chose obviously my family first, but um, you just won't blink on me. <laughs> You're, yeah, yeah. Really... Okay, sorry. So I, I, the and I and I explained it to them. And I said, "Listen, if I go to Cuba and something happens to my grandson in the hospital, yeah. you can't fly back. You can't fly yeah. back. You have to you you're scheduled to fly back at a certain day, and that's the only time you come back." And I was going to risk that and stuff, but I had you know with with uh, Rosita and Saladin and stuff like that. I said, "Please go there, find out everything you need to do, find out what it, and please let's work on bringing some Cuban artists." And obviously, they brought in. Um, Oh God, I can't even think of who it brought it. It was just, just this past uh, this past February that they did the uh, the concert. Um, that, is, is it December Bueno? Is that who? no 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 it wasn't December Bueno. It was uh, it, it was supposed to be I did believe it was supposed to be December Bueno. Then it, it was switched to later on. So it was um, if somebody if somebody knows, please tell me. <laughs> um, you know, no 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 yeah yeah because I just I just it just it just it, it it's uh really 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 good and and dude and and we watched him and i gotta honestly say so as you talked about the two different communities that were there yeah. a lot of people did not know who this guy was yeah. but he put on a show because he's a veteran let's be honest with you when you come to salsa artists who are veterans and when they've been performing for the past 30 plus years on stage. We could say that about Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson. Anybody who's been a performer on stage knows how to get a crowd going. And I think that's the, the beauty about when it comes to these older artists that perform yeah. on stage, whether, whether it's salsa, whether it's bachata, you know, Anthony Santos, who is one of the older guys and stuff like that. He's going to, he has a stage presence, Hector, you know, uh, they, they, these guys have that stage presence because they know how to make a crowd move. That's yeah. just the way it is. And, yes. you know, g g let me get a new guy, you know, and, 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 you know, what, what a lot of people didn't realize that when I, when I was um, heard about Leonie Torres coming here, a lot of people didn't know he was from Charanga Havana. He's been in the scene for the past 20 years and, and performing. So I knew already this guy is going to put on a show. And sure enough, at the House of Blues, he put on a show, man. He's 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 a show. You know, he looks young and stuff like that, and all the women are going crazy about him because he's a good-looking guy. But man, he put on a show because he knows how to make a stage presence. And I think that's where people got to realize that live performance, especially when it comes to tropical music, that is where you see it is right on the stage. It, you know, you can hear all the songs you want that we play. Click play. But when you see an artist, and especially like an artist that you hear, that's a big difference from, you know, and, and, and everybody, I think everybody is in awe because, you know, especially a perfect example, Hiberto Santa Rosa. What he does on stage is completely different than the live, you know, because he's doing basically freestyling it and stuff like that. And you see all this, <laughs> like, wow, you know, and then he just keeps on and keeps on and on. Um, when he performed at the Cuban Fest here, you know, we had, we had, we had uh, six year of the Cuban Fest and he was on stage and just people just, and just were like blown away. I think we had uh, almost a uh, hundred thousand people uh, that showed up for that event. Oh, wow. so it was, it was at, at Reese Park. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> but, you know, again, you know, obviously the oldest, older, you know, what you talk about, the older generation per se, and then people who, you know, just... Oh, I'm, I want to go there because it's just a festival. It's, it's another yeah. festival, you know. It's, it's different, yeah. So uh, I'm going to jump a little back. So I'm guessing you are in the same boat as I am because of this COVID. Because it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, so, well, yeah. 
Okay, so yeah. So this obviously has stopped me dead in my tracks, seeing as though I'm a uh, full time mobile DJ. And I think my first wedding was supposed to be April 25th. And obviously, I've missed that. <laughs> and a lot of my weddings have gotten pushed back so hopefully if this thing is over by september i've got five weddings in september and birthday parties and all kinds of stuff right. uh but yeah the capital congress which you know i you know i'm a part of here with shock of the owner um that was supposed to be the end of june we had to cancel that because you know people they just don't know so people aren't going to buy passes and you can't get all these hotel rooms nope. without knowing nope. for sure if the event's nope. going to be able to go and so now the same thing with the orlando salsa congress uh which is uh, usually fourth of july weekend even though we haven't gotten an official word uh that it uh, is not going to happen i mean at this point even if this thing were to let up at the end of may i mean Come June, people are still going to be a little tentative to go out to events, you know, especially a large Congress, you know, where people are changing dance partners every three minutes, four minutes is like, I don't know if that's going to necessarily happen this year, man, this may not this stuff may come around to 2021. Um, sure, I'll get some small events that'll, that'll still want to do events and whatnot, and I'll be able to pick back up. Uh, but some of what I've been doing, I've been going live and doing live sets. And as you are, you and I have already talked about, Facebook really blocks a lot of that sometimes. And so yep. I've gotten over on Twitch, uh, which doesn't uh, block it. But then again, your audience isn't as, you know, they're not just there already. Like Facebook, they're just there. They can be going through their feed and see that you're live. Hence and, what, right and now, click. what's happening yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, oh, oh, let me see what's going on. And they click, boom, they're right, right. there. So it's relatively easy to do that. Whereas Twitch, you have to get the app, you know, even though I put the link up and all you have to do is hit the link because it's a URL uh, and they can be there and listen to it still. What I like about Twitch is that it doesn't block you. You can DJ for three hours. What they'll do is if there's copyrighted material and anything that you've DJed for the last three hours, they won't save the video, which is right, fine. Right, right, right. Because it's like, like, live, live stream is live stream. Yeah, it's live stream. That's You're coming like, to my event at the club. It's live. It isn't yeah, you it's live. A replay. You can't. Yeah, you can't replay. record me and listen to me later after Friday night. You know, so right. Uh, that's working okay. And you know, we put up our Venmo and PayPal and, and and Cash App, and some people tip DJs, and that 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 helps kind of you know. But I luckily for me, I had a little bit of a a nest egg saved up, and so I'm taking this time right now to dig through my music and i'll say this to any djs that are listening right now especially if you're a beginning dj just learning the craft take this downtime to really perfect your craft to dig through your music find those songs that you've been looking for or that you you know didn't even know was in your folder find those songs separate them into whatever your timba folder your mambo folder your on one your romantica um also learn to mix i mean i know some of you are just like salsa djs but when i started off i was just a salsa dj too but i started getting wedding invitations and stuff like that because on the salsa community people like to hire people that they know and so they already know you they've seen you they know you know how to talk in the mic they're like hey will you do my wedding and if you don't know how to mix you're missing out on you know, a lot of potential money there. So DJs, please, I implore you, you take this time to learn how to mix and to learn about our craft. And if you are an Amer, if you're, a, you know, American person who didn't grow up with salsa, take this time to really learn the music while we're not out there working. And then that way, when we get back into it, you'll come back a lot more prepared to take on some gigs than maybe you would have uh, before learn about your equipment learn how to plug in xlr quarter inch how to convert and if the music stops what do you do what are the first three things you check if the music just completely stops you know because i've seen djs uh, uh djs i'll say i'll use that word lightly i use i, I actually say dancers with laptops uh <laughs> some dancers, <laughs> so Good i've one. seen some, some dancers <laughs> with laptops and they're out djing at a social and then all of a sudden the music just stops and they just stand there like like a deer in the headlights, uh, not even knowing like the first thing to do, you know. And so, uh, of course, a real DJ runs up real quick and kind of starts, you know, doing everything. Process of elimination. Yeah, exactly. It's process of elimination. It's either the mixer, it's either the cord, the speaker. Oh, wait, I, I left it unplugged. Oh, the battery died. 
<laughs> yeah. So I would definitely say to those, you know, DJs, uh, and, and, I, and even myself, who, you know, been DJing for 12 years and, and Prieto probably twice longer than me, um, you know, we, we're taking that time yeah, three times. <laughs> we're, we're taking that time also to improve our craft as well, you know. So yeah. I just, tell DJs to do that. We got some off time. We're not doing gigs, but if you're not getting paid for gigs, at least increase your market value while we have this downtime. Right. I don't know. It's very good advice. Very good advice. I, I mean, as you see, the hour went by quickly. <laughs> it's okay. yeah. it's, it goes by yeah. quickly and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and, and, and I'm glad you said that about the new DJs and stuff like that. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm really happy about, and you are almost by three weeks into my show and stuff like that. And uh, what's been good about this is that I really am appreciative that you guys jump on my show, number one. Number two, any genre of DJs that I have, you being obviously the tropical DJ, the guy I had last night was Latin DJ. Another guy was a, a house DJ, first guy that ever did streaming per se, you know, that, that but I find it real amazing that everybody does not have the same story about how they started in this business. Number one. Number two, everybody. It surprises me always that I, I, I that you find out things that you never knew about somebody. Really, really is stuff like that. So yeah. I'm happy. I'm, 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 you know, so I'm kind of really thankful that I'm doing this with you guys meaning all yeah. the DJs out there that, and the DJs that tomorrow and I got a lot, you know, I'm, I'm booked all the way to June <laughs> with this, with this, uh, the front door show. And I really like the fact that, that I would tell you when I talk to you or talk to anybody past that it is not what I thought it was going to be as far as information wise and stuff like that. And they all, everybody, everybody has been giving some great advice and stuff like that. Uh, there's, mm -hmm. There's not, there's never been a bad interview. That's what I love, I love about this. And, and, you know, and, and thank you for doing what you're doing with this, because I think people need to hear messages like what you talk about, especially when, you know, I think for us, you've been doing it for 12 years. I've been doing it for 36 years, literally 36 years and <laughs> um, a little longer than that. But I mean, but I'm always the type of person that wants to make sure that I'm going to be gone and you want people to take over and do it correctly. And this is, this is an art form. I think we, we all can agree. This is what we do as an art, Yeah, yeah. you know, and paying it forward, you know, what we do in our art is want to make sure that people, especially because right now with everything else, everything stopped the technology now, and this is, you know, very, very, you know, we didn't have this, you know, 20 years ago with this, yeah. this, is, uh, this is new, new, new realm of it, but I think that's what I like is that if we can get that message to new people all the time and to anybody that's listening, that's a parent of kids that want to get into this, this is, this is not a bad thing for them. This is, this isn't a waste of time. This is actually, you know, like you're making money. I'm yeah, making my, you know, we're, this yeah. is a way, you know, if, 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 if I got, I would hope that if a parent sees this, and there's little 12 year old sons comes up and says, I want a DJ, you know, don't think that if it's like, it's the worst thing. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't know. You're going to, you, we want you to do something else. We don't want you to DJ. That's not, it's, you know, and for the love of music, it's an art, you yeah. know, you know, it's the same thing like a dancer, you know, some, some kid says he wants to go to a salsa school and he wants to dance, learn dancing, you know, don't tell him no. You know, it's an art. Oh, yeah. You know, I want to go. I want to play trumpet. I want to play uh, tuba. I want to play violin and stuff. It's art, yeah. man. Let them, let them, yeah. let them learn art. And I think yeah. art. Artists. I mean, you can sustain. I mean, you can sustain yourself doing this. I, when I when I originally started, I had my job at the time in two thousand eight, uh, but you know, I lost it two two years later. And luckily, I had been DJing long enough already to kind of get my feet wet and to really give it a go. But yeah, I mean. Uh, Growing up as a kid and, and saying you want to be a DJ when you're like eight and 10, I can see why parents would push back against that. But definitely as a hobby, I would say most people, it starts off as a hobby, as something we're doing. We love music, uh, you know, and then it just gets to the point where we get good at it. And then we go, hey, I can actually make money with this. And then we branch off and do it. But it is a tough 
living too. I just want to let people know, especially this is the first pandemic. I don't know. You've been doing it 36 <laughs> years. I don't know how many pandemics you've been through, but well, this is the first pandemic. <laughs> well, well, in technical terms, this is not my first pandemic in the sense of when it comes, what, what, and hear me out, a yeah. virus pandemic as a part to like when I was doing the mixtapes and CDs, right? And then yeah. they, what happened is that you couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. So I would, you know, basically a rug was pulled underneath my witch car. But yeah. then something, then I did something else. I became a promoter and stuff like that. Or, you know, or like when I was doing breakdancing, kind of the, the whole breakdancing scene, you know, he fell, fell out, you know, the breakdancing yeah. scene fell out. So, you know, I think that that's what happens with this, just like right now. If something stops it from happening, and, you know, it's the guys who adjust and the guys who, who, learn from okay this is not the way it's going to work so yeah. wh whoever who the creative guys i think that's really what it is the creative guys are going to surpass this yeah, yeah, yeah. people who, who who really have done this for like for other purposes as far as what we're doing i think they're the ones that are gonna get flatlined we as far as the creative ones are going to figure ways and hence what i'm doing now with this life this live tv show yeah, yeah. I, you know it's, it's taking yeah. off Taking over, yeah. you know, and I, yeah. I, I, music, I, music, music isn't going anywhere. And I don't care Spotify or whatever it is where you can just do your own little mix now. And people are still going to want DJs because nobody, Spotify can't read a crowd, you know. Nope. And so, nope. Uh, nope. And, and Spotify may not know, like just sometimes you can just know the vibe of the room and, and adjust very uh, quickly and very easily. Um, so I don't think you know, what will go anywhere. Like you said, things like this will just, it'll just uh, separate the, the the boys from the men type of a thing. And then the, the people that were just kind of dabbling in it, maybe they'll fall off and realize that, hey, there's no real money to be made here. Uh, but like you said, I, I'm glad that the veteran DJs will still be able to survive this and to pick up and to continue. But I also think, and I would, I would warn us that we do have to get used to a new norm. I think there's going to be a new normal out there, yep. especially in the the dance community of all four of the genres that we've spoken of, because what happens is they're all intimate and close, right, touchy, right, contact, touchy, you're all right up <laughs> uh, cheek to cheek, you're kissing on the cheeks, you're sweaty, you're hugging, you yeah. know, and I just don't know if we're going to have to get used to a new normal with that. I, I even If this thing got rid of itself at the end of May, I still think we well, would be nervous. Psychological. It'd be psychological. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, it's, it's, still, it's, it's still gonna be there. So yeah. you're right. We're definitely gonna have to get used to uh, a new normal. But like you said, the professionals will adjust and 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 will figure out some kind of way. But I definitely like like these live parties. I hope that Facebook gets their act together and finds out a way to monetize this so that DJs can pay like maybe twenty dollars, twenty five dollars a month, and that that can go towards the royalties and go towards ASCAP fees or whatever to allow DJs to do because that's how that's how dancers get introduced to music is through us and the radio stations we and bring it's, that it's, forth it's been like that forever <laughs> yeah, and I can't, I can't I can't believe they're not I mean I would think the artists themselves would be like hey yeah please please well well okay so I just to interject about this so is the artist don't make money off the record companies. The record companies are the ones doing this. So technically, yeah, the record companies are the ones doing that, not the artists. But, the artists, I, 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 well, because let's let me let's put it this way, that has changed in the course because of the digital age has changed. Remember, a lot of the artists, especially the older artists, they didn't have digital rights yeah, on yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That changed as, yeah. as as the technology changed and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So, like one of the artists I was talking to says, "Yeah, they would." 30,000 plays, I'm getting 30 cents? Nah, you know, yeah. like that's that kind of, but where does he make his money? Performance, live, yeah. you know, that's where he's yeah. making, that's he's making his money and stuff. So trust me, it, it, you're, you're right about, I, I agree with that. We, we gotta, there's gotta be some, some sort of way. I, I, I hope uh, Mark Zuckerberg is Zuckerberg, listening. Yeah. Yeah, listening well, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Mark, if you're listening now, I had to talk to ASCAP and BMI and get a, you know, because I know I would pay. 
Yeah, me too. I'm like, I'm going to pay $20,000 a month for Go Live. Uh, well, you know Mixcloud did it, right? You know Mixcloud rolled right, out. Right, right. They're, they're doing it, but they're, 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 yeah, they're, 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 that I don't like about it, what I've heard that, that I don't like is that you can't do it straight from your phone. Like, 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 like you have to have OBS or some kind of broadcasting type secondary software. But remember, it's just in the beta phase. Once they figure that out and figure out a way to do that, and then the people can get in on the chat, I, I think they're going to, they're going to, Facebook may lose, you know, a lot of well, their DJs and some of their audience. Uh, Facebook is smart enough. If Mixcloud is making more money, They'll yeah. figure it out real quick. Yeah, They'll say, oh, they yeah, better. here's the fix. Because <laughs> they have the money. They got, they, they got money. I mean, for a long time, how many times have they said that FaceCloud was going to start charging, right? Yeah. They've been talking about that now. No, but here's an excuse for them to make money. So, yeah, yeah. Mark, make you make your yeah. money. Now's your time. Yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark, if you're checking out this, uh, I don't see you signed in, but if you're, if you're in the chat, uh, you know, help us out here. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, thank you. We passed the hour a little bit, but that's all cool yeah. and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Stay yes, online. Sir. Any last words to the customers? So as far as people sign on and people, you know, no, just keep salsa alive for you people that were just dabbling. Don't stray too far. We'll be back. Salsa will be uh, the veterans and the, in the, the, I know you guys will still be there. So don't worry about that. We got to do it for like, we got to stick in there. Uh, and uh, don't let something like COVID, uh, stop you from doing what we've grown up doing for so many years. And I know so many people are just aching and ready. People are just sitting at home like, I want to dance. So hopefully it'll happen soon. But in the meantime, support your DJs online if you can, please. A lot of us are going live and uh, doing what we can. We have, you know, some of us, I'm, I'm doing okay, but like some other DJs have no, no gigs and right, they have no right. form of getting, and, and instructors too. Those, those, they're a part of our family too. Help support right. the instructors by attending their workshops online. Uh, hopefully this will be over in a month or two and we, we'll be back to some form of normalcy. Thank you, DJ Prieto and four fantastic events out in Chicago uh, for having me on. Uh, to my Chicago peeps, if you're in the house, what's up? I miss you guys. Hopefully I'll be back home uh, at some point to visit you guys and to come to Alhambra and kick it with my boy again. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, man.